Welcome back to Kids Biochemistry. This lecture we're going to talk about glycogen metabolism and the HMP shunt. Let's get going. Let's talk about glycogen, energy use, plasma glucose lasts two to four hours. Plasma glucose lasts two to four hours. It lasts two to four hours. All right, plasma glucose lasts two to four hours. Excellent. Liver glycogen starts at four hours and lasts 24 to 28 hours. It starts at four hours and it lasts. 24 to 28. Excellent. Muscle proteins start at 36 hours and last three to four days. Muscle proteins start at 36 hours. And they last? Three to four days. Adipose tissue lipids start at 36 hours and last up to three weeks. Adipose tissue lipids start at? 36 hours. And last up to? Three weeks. Ketones start at 36 hours and keep the brain alive until the very end. So whether the body is building up stores or breaking down those stores for use as ATP, we will always go through things in this order. Thus, fat can't be built up without building glycogen and protein first. And that can't be broken down without burning through glucose, glycogen, and protein. That's why fat is so hard to get rid of. Glycogenesis stores glucose as long chains and carries a lot of water with it. Anytime glucose goes somewhere, remember, water goes with it and it's only found in specific organs. Where do we have glycogen? Most of it is in the muscle, okay, which is the largest organ in our body by mass, okay? Liver and adrenals mobilize glycogen to glucose, and these are the most metabolically active organs uh, dealing with glycogen. The intestinal wall. If we don't break down glycogen, we end up having what we call third spacing as well as the heart. Glycogen is a whole lot of glucose that always carries water around, okay? That's what makes these organs large, and it makes them even larger if we can't break that glycogen down. So let's talk about glycogenesis. Before we can start making glycogen, we have to have enough glucose around to store some away. So we are therefore well-fed, parasympathetic, anabolic. Well-fed, parasympathetic, anabolic. Well-fed, parasympathetic, anabolic. Let's try it one more time. Well-fed, parasympathetic, anabolic. Excellent. Well-fed, parasympathetic, and anabolic. First enzyme, hexokinase. Okay? Now we're going to talk about hexokinase and we're going to talk about glucokinase. We're going to talk about hexokinase and glucokinase. The difference between the two, I'm going to tell you now, but we're going to review it again and again, is that hexokinase is everywhere, but glucokinase is only in the liver. So let's talk about hexokinase first. What's the substrate? The substrate is glucose. The substrate for hexokinase is? Glucose. The product is glucose 6-phosphate. The product is? Glucose-6-phosphate. There are two cofactors, ATP and magnesium. Magnesium and? ATP. ATP and? Magnesium, magnesium and? ATP. Excellent. So hexokinase, the substrate is glucose, the product is glucose-6-phosphate, and the cofactors are ATP and magnesium. The unique characteristics about glucose, well, it's irreversible. What does it do? It phosphorylates any six carbon sugar using ATP. And phosphorylation makes that molecule larger and more charged, thus harder to cross membranes, trapping it inside of the cell so the enzymes can act on it, okay? It's located in all organs, okay? In all organs. There's a low KM for glucose, which means this enzyme is active at all times. This enzyme has a low KM for glucose, and KM is the inverse of affinity. In which organ do you think the KM of this enzyme will be the lowest? So that means which organ needs glucose as in energy the most? The brain. brain. Got it? The brain. Therefore, the answer to the lowest KM question is not specific to this enzyme, but can be applied to all enzymes. So we talked about hexokinase, and hexokinase is everywhere. We said it's just like glucokinase, but glucokinase is only in the liver and pancreas. Glucokinase, same thing. The substrate is still glucose. The product is still glucose 6-phosphate. The cofactors are ATP and magnesium. It's also irreversible, but it's only in the liver and pancreas. In the liver and? Pancreas, pancreas and? Liver. liver and? 
pancreas and exosomes. So hexokinase is everywhere, glucokinase is not. It has a high KM for glucose. Why is that? It's because this enzyme is only active when lots of glucose is around. Next enzymes, we talked about hexokinase, glucokinase, and now we have phosphoglucomutase. The substrate here now is where we left off, glucose 6-phosphate. What's the substrate? Glucose 6-phosphate. The product is glucose 1-phosphate. So the substrate was? Glucose 6-phosphate. The, the substrate for phosphoglucomutase was? Glucose 6-phosphate. And the product for phosphoglucomutase is? Glucose 1-phosphate. There are no cofactors here. And the unique characteristic here is unlike the last two enzymes, which were irreversible, this is reversible. Now we have G1P uridyl transferase, and the substrate now is just where we left off at glucose 1-phosphate. The substrate for G1P uridyl transferase is? Glucose 1-phosphate. And the product is UDP glucose. The product is? UDP glucose. The cofactor is UTP. The cofactor is? UTP. Excellent. The unique characteristic here is UDP glucose is the form that enters glycogenesis. All right? UDP, remember, is always the carrier for one molecule of glucose. The carrier for multiple glucose molecules is dolichol. Okay? The carrier for multiple glucose molecules is? Dolichol. Excellent. So, so far, let's review what we've done. We've talked about hexokinase and glucokinase taking glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. Then we said we have phosphoglucomutase, which takes glucose 6-phosphate to glucose 1-phosphate. Then we had G1P uridyl transferase, which takes that glucose 1-phosphate and turns it into UDP glucose. Now we're going to talk about glycogen synthetase. Now, some books will say glycogen synthase. Is this the one? Some books will say glycogen synthase. Some books will say glycogen synthetase. The difference between synthase and synthetase is that synthetases require ATP. So we're going to go with synthetase because we're using UTP here, okay? But those terms are interchangeable, so don't get confused. So glycogen synthetase. The substrate is glycogenin OH or glycogenin hydroxide. The substrate for glycogen synthetase is glycogenin OH or glycogen hydroxide or glycogen with 0 to 9 glucose attached. The product is glycogen with 1 to 10 glucose attached. Now, why is this enzyme important? Enzyme is important because this is the rate-limiting enzyme of glycogenesis. The rate-limiting enzyme of glycogenesis is glycogen synthetase. The rate-limiting enzyme of glycogenesis is? The rate-limiting enzyme of glycogenesis is? Glycogen synthetase. Excellent. Remember, when you talk about rate-limiting enzymes, remember all of the S's. It's slow. It's got a sigmoidal shape. Substrate concentration is important. All right. And it's irreversible, so we say S for strong. All right. Now, since G1P, uridyl transferase, requires one UTP, and glycogen synthetase releases one UTP, the net energy requirement of glycogenesis is zero, okay? Now, we said it's a rate-limiting enzyme. That means it's got a sigmoidal curve, okay? It's the slowest enzyme. It's got the lowest Vmax in this pathway. Now, this enzyme creates an alpha-1-4 bond. It creates an alpha-1-4 bond. Glycogen synthetase creates an? Alpha-1,4-bond. Excellent. And it cannot add more than 10 glucose in a straight chain, which is why the product is glycogen with 1 to 10 glucose attached. When you talk about rate-limiting enzymes, what you need to know, okay, every time is what activates it and promotes it as opposed to what inhibits it. What are the promoters? What are the activators? What are the inhibitors? So the promoters or activators are, we've got four of them. Insulin, say it. Insulin. Glucose. Glucose. ATP. ATP. UTP. UTP. Excellent. Insulin. Insulin. Glucose. Glucose. 
ATP. ATP. UTP. UTP. We've got four activators or promoters. We've got three inhibitors. The three inhibitors are glucagon, ADP, and UDP. The inhibitors are glucagon, ADP, and UDP. Go. Glucagon, ADP, UDP. One more time. Glucagon, ADP, UDP. Excellent. So, glycogenesis is an anabolic pathway in which we want to store energy. We store energy when we have a surplus of energy. ATP and UTP then become activators of glycogen synthetase because they represent a surplus of energy. ADP and UDP represent a deficit of energy and become inhibitors. Insulin is our major anabolic hormone and will activate the anabolic pathway. Glucagon is a catabolic hormone and will inhibit glycogenesis. Glucose is an activator because we need glucose around to make glycogen. Our blood glucose is regulated by insulin which allows glucose to enter the cells and become metabolized. Okay, so we've got four activators and three inhibitors. Let's review them one more time. The activators are insulin, glucose, ATP, UTP. Go. Insulin, glucose, ATP, UTP. The three inhibitors are glucagon, ADP, and UDP. Glucagon, ADP, and UDP. Go. Glucagon, ADP, UDP. Excellent. The next enzyme is branching enzyme. All right, so the product is glycogen with 8 to 10 glucose attached and another one attached on a vertical branch, hence the term branching enzyme. The cofactors required by branching enzyme are, is a UDP glucose. The cofactor is? UDP glucose. The unique characteristic is, as opposed to earlier, we talked about making an alpha-1-4 bond. This makes an alpha-1-6 bond. It makes an alpha-1-6 bond. Branching enzyme makes an alpha-1-6 bond. What kind of bond does a branching enzyme make? Alpha-1-6. There will always be a hydroxide group off the last <coughs> glucose at the branch point, and glycogen synthetase can now work in the vertical direction. So you have branching enzyme here. You have an image of it. Glucose now attaches after this through glycogen synthetase in the direction of the arrow. So let's do a summary of glycogenesis. The substrates were UDP glucose and glycogen and OH. The product was glycogen. This happened in the anabolic state in the cytoplasm in four organs, the liver, the muscle, the heart, and the adrenals. The cofactors required for this pathway were magnesium, ATP, and UTP. And we talked earlier about how there was no net change in energy. Pathway connections. Glycolysis via uh, hexokinase, uh, reversed by glycogenolysis. Deficiencies will lead to glycogen storage diseases. We'll talk about those soon. And we said the rate-limiting step or the rate-limiting enzyme was glycogen synthetase. And we said that there were four activators and three inhibitors. Let's review it again. The four activators for glycogen synthetase were insulin, glucose, ATP, UTP. Go. Insulin, glucose, ATP, UTP. And the three inhibitors for glycogen synthetase were glucagon, ADP, and UDP. Glucagon, ADP, UDP. Excellent. Von Gerke's disease. The enzyme that's deficient is glucose 6-phosphatase. The enzyme that's deficient is glucose 6-phosphatase. The enzyme deficiency in Von Gerke's is? Glucose 6-phosphatase. The enzyme deficient in Von Gerke's disease is? Glucose 6 And what you're going to see in here is going to be severe fasting hypoglycemia. Liver and adrenals will be enlarged. You will have increased triglycerides, increased lactic acid, and increased uric acid. Okay? This is easy to remember because look, von Gerke's has a G. The G kind of looks like a 6. Okay, so that's how I remember that it's glucose 6 phosphatase. Glycogen storage disease. Let's talk about Pompe's disease. The enzyme deficiency in Pompase is alpha 1 4 glucosidase. Okay? The enzyme deficient in Pompase is alpha 1 4 glucosidase. And we just talked about this, the rate limiting enzyme in uh, glycogenolysis. Presentation what happens? Well, you die of heart failure before the age of one year. You have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, congestive heart failure due to cardiomegaly. 
you're going to have signs and symptoms here of cardiomyopathy, so exercise intolerance, wheezes, crackles, ronchi, low energy state, okay? How to remember this? Pompeys or pumps? Kind of sounds like pump. Pump is in the heart, okay? So uh, just, just remember that. That's how I remember it. Now, before we do the next one, I want you to repeat after me. Say A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Let's do it again like I actually care. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. One more time. A, B, C, D. Now repeat after me. Anderson's branching. Anderson's branching. Corey's debranching. Corey's debranching. Anderson branching. Corey debranching. Anderson's branching. Corey debranching. We'll talk about Corey's disease first. Corey's disease, the enzyme that's deficient is CD. So Corey's debranching enzyme. The enzyme deficient in Corey's is? Debranching enzyme. The problem you have is you have a problem degrading glycogen. So glycogen will appear as large branched molecule with four glucose tail. A large branched molecule with a four glucose tail, but gluconeogenesis is intact. Now this is milder than von Gerke's because you're able to break off some glycogen. Let's talk about McArdle's disease. McArdle's disease, M for McArdle's, M for muscle. So the enzyme deficiency is glycogen phosphorylase in the muscle. McArdle's disease, the enzyme deficient is? Glycogen phosphorylase. Actually, so they're going to present with muscle pain, but normal muscle size because glycogen is remaining in the muscle, and that's where most of it already is, so the size is normal. Okay, but they're going to have muscle pain. So M for McArdle's, M for muscle. Okay. A, B, C, D, again, do it. A, B, C, D. One more time. A, B, C, D. <laughs> Anderson's branching, Corey's debranching, we did, but there's another one, A, B, C, D. Atonic baby, cirrhosis, death. Say it. Atonic baby, cirrhosis, death. For Anderson's, we have A, B, C, D. Atonic baby, cirrhosis, death. Say it. Atonic baby, cirrhosis, death. Excellent. The enzyme deficient here is the A, B, so Anderson's branches. The branching enzyme is deficient. What's the enzyme that's deficient in Anderson's disease? Enzyme. What's the enzyme that's deficient in Anderson's disease? Branching enzyme. There we go. Presentation of a problem synthesizing glycogen. So glycogen will appear at 6 to 10 glucose chains. And it's milder presentation than von, Ver than von Gerke's because you have the ability to mobilize glucose from glycogen. And atonic baby, cirrhosis death, look for that as a presentation. HERS disease, the first two letters in HERS are HE, and the first two letters in hepatic are HE. So that's how I remember that this is an enzyme deficiency of glycogen phosphorylase in the liver. So McArdle's was glycogen phosphorylase in the muscle, and McArdle's, HE, HERS, HE, hepatic, so this is glycogen phosphorylase in the liver. The enzyme deficient in HERS is? Glycogen phosphorylase. And the presentation is hepatomegaly, okay? So the treatment for all glycogen storage diseases except Pompeys is this. Feed them small, regular meals containing glucose every three to four hours. Glycogen will therefore never have to be used, thus the symptoms of these diseases will be minimized.